Welcome everybody to the Pirate Skills Meetup today on August 19th. This time we're going to talk about tracking everything with Google Tech Manager. We have had several Google Analytics, Facebook Pixel and so on tracking meetups uh, with our nice turquoise color. And I always get the question at a certain level of technical sophistication, like, but what about Tech Manager? Can you teach us more about this? And I really want to create this one resource where I can point people to here. These are the basics for Google Tech Manager. And at the end, I will tell you learning resources that will take you from beginner to intermediate to advanced. Understand that this is today introduction into getting started with Google Tech Manager. So if you are already highly technical with it, ask the questions and then we can answer those technical questions in the, in the Q&A section at the end. But be ready that we are going to introduce you to the whole topic. And I think the beginners and intermediates, they will really appreciate us uh, starting here properly for everybody. Cool. So um, what do we have on track for today? We're first going to talk about how awesome it is to manage audio for pixels without coding. Then how it can affect your ad campaigns and how it can improve your performance. And then for the product people, we want to gain maximum visibility of our user behavior. And then, as mentioned before, I want to show you what the learning path for Google Tech Manager is, because one hour is going to give you a good introduction that you can implement right away. But it takes it takes a little while. It's a Tech Manager takes some getting used to. Let me say it like that. And at the end, we have the Q&A session as always, and you can add your questions through slido.com when you enter the code R. Let's start tackling the first part, managing pixels without coding. Why is this so important? Let's go right into a concrete case study. Last time we talked about Monday Rocks, this time again. Monday Rocks is an app for successful team management. It's targeted towards B2B people, team leader, HR management, and um, they want to onboard people and of course um, into their software as a service solution and they need a landing page that converts. So let's take a look at this landing page and what we would like to track in order to make a high performance B2B lead generation funnel. This works as well for B2C, so just keep watching. All right, here is the first part of the landing page. You can see the top fold, it's a bit zoomed out. Uh, so let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, and you can see that the main attraction on this first fold is the button, the orange button that says discover your team. And why would we want to click it? Because the truth is at least 50% of the people who are watching this are going to just uh, leave the page without any interaction. We call those bounces. Yeah, and everything below a 50% bounce rate is already considered good. So just face that reality that every single interaction a person can do shows some form of commitment. Sounds a bit ridiculous to call a click a commitment, but on Facebook, it's already a commitment to get people to watch a 10 second video. And the same is true here, to get people interested, to make them scroll down. Uh, that, is a, that is a true challenge. So first of all, I wanna track that people actually landed on this page. Yeah, this is a page view. And then I wanna know that the person clicked on this button. So let's scroll down. Oh, there are two more buttons. They can schedule an appointment to get a consultation that helps them to implement the software as a service solution for team management. And of course, we not only want to track that click, but we want to track the whole journey after that. The, the scheduling, the emails, the reminders, the call, the actual appearance in the call, the result of that. And all of this can be really helpfully done with Google Tech Manager. And there is another call to action. They can get go straight into the app. And this, again, is something that we want to track. Uh, it's a complete online experience. So we have the ability to take them from this landing page through that click and track their whole user behavior long, as long as they consent, of course. Yeah, we are in a GDPR world. We ask people if they want to be tracked or not. If they say yes, we can get, uh, we get to do this. Otherwise, we don't. But it's good enough if at least like 20 to 50 percent of people say yes i want to be tracked and this is an interesting page ah oh, yeah now you can see a price 319 euros as a starting point everybody who took the time to actually view this area pricing area is interesting so maybe i want to track everybody 
who has scrolled down far enough to have this element visible either on mobile or desktop. Uh, because I think people who see a price and people who do not see a price, they can react quite differently. So I definitely want to know that. So, and then there's even more information on this landing page. You can again go to the uh, scheduling appointment or to, to just book it online immediately. And of course, again, we're interested in the scrolls, in the clicks and what happens afterwards. So now imagine you have to track those 10 events that we talked about for Google Analytics, for Google AdWords, for Facebook Pixel, for LinkedIn, for Twitter. Your developer is going to go nuts and they don't want to do it and you don't want to do it, even if you know how to do it. This would be implemented in about 50 custom tracking events if you really wanted to do it with code. Plus, if you change something on your website, you're going to be super inflexible. So we're going to look at a solution with Google Tag Manager on how we are going to be able to manage all of those pixels without code. Uh, I think this is a very, very exciting time to be in that you just have to install a tool like Google Tag Manager once properly and on WordPress website, even non-technical people can definitely do that. Um, or in simple web pages and in services like Wix and Squarespace and whatnot. Um, you don't need to be a developer to, to get in there. And after that, you can just work in Google Tag Manager, set all the pixels up. And I want to show you today on how to do this exactly. What is Google Tag Manager and, and why am I so excited about it? Yeah, imagine you had to do the implementation of those 50 events and then somebody told you, I got these tools that just takes care of it through a user interface. And this is where Google Tag Manager comes to the rescue. Imagine it as a layer between your website and your pixels. On the left-hand side, you can see, oh yeah, there's your website. It could also be your mobile app. It could be your um, survey form. And then you have Google Tag Manager. All the user behavior is being sent to Google Tag Manager. And from there on, it's like a spider in the middle of the web. And it sends that information to Facebook, to Google, to LinkedIn, to Twitter, wherever you want it to be sent. Um, as long as the user consented to it. And that makes your life incredibly easy. You can't imagine how complex um, a more thorough tracking setup can become over time. And the ability to not needing to change that in the code of the website that might break down because I made a mistake when I recommitted the website, it, it's just such a huge risk to not go with a tag management solution. There are other tag managers, um, but we, today we're going to talk about specifically about Google Tag Manager because it has become like the de facto standard tool. But last week, for example, I helped with the implementation of a Matomo tag manager. And that is a very data, um, data privacy centric tool. Matomo, if you're interested in that, it's an alternative to Google Analytics that can be hosted on your own servers and therefore information does not get, get to be sent overseas and which increases the probability that you are GDPR compliant with or without consent. So that's Google Tag Manager. And what, what can you do with it? I just listed my, my favorite things I like to do with it and my benefits that I, that I get out of it. So as I mentioned before, I want to have all of my pixels in one place. Uh, to be honest, I, I have up to 10 pixels on my website. It's, it's, it's that stuff like Google Analytics, Google Optimize. Uh, yes, the Google Tag Manager itself. It's usually Google Ads conversion tags. In addition to that, it might be Google Ads retargeting tags. It, it is Facebook Pixel. It is the LinkedIn Pixel. It's the Twitter Pixel. Uh, I, I'm testing stuff with Pinterest. I have tested with Quora. Um, I have maybe a chat widget implemented to Google Tag Manager. So 10 is easily done. And having all those in one place and just having to set up the second point, the ability to create rule-based triggers that fire those pixels, only having to do it once and then being able to send it to 10 different tools, that's just amazing magic for me. So creating those trigger-based rules is something we're gonna, gonna talk about definitely uh, in the, the upcoming minutes. So 
Then we want to be able to, to fire page views, so people landed on the page, and events, what people did on the page through Tag Manager. And uh, a special ability, um, you don't have to publish everything right away. You can go into a preview mode and check if everything is working and only if stuff is working and if you don't see any weirdness on your website, then you publish it to everybody. Uh, and you can access user management. Imagine you have a couple of agencies working with you, or team members, people entering, going, leaving, and you can have a centralized access to what can be changed. Yeah, um, and you can you can access this through Google Tag Manager, and I really like that. And and yes, I also have the ability to track specifically based on the user consent. So if somebody wants to be tracked on Google but not on Facebook, it's absolutely possible to to configure that with uh, Google Tag Manager, and it's much harder when it's hard coded. I think those are like the main benefits. If you have additional benefits, of which there are many, please put them in the comments. I would love to hear them. This is how Tag Manager looks like when you have implemented that. Uh, this is straight a screenshot from Monday Rocks uh, where you can see uh, here we got a conversion linker, we got Google Analytics, events primarily, uh, like a call to action being clicked, uh, a basic program being booked, um, a header call to action being clicked. We're going to look at this header call to action a lot. So. Um, we're going to use the header call to action, the first orange button that I talked about as an example throughout this whole uh, meetup. Yeah, So you can see, you can scroll down a lot. There are lots of events tracked there in different tools, not just in Google Analytics, but, but this is what you get, a list of the tags and a list of the triggers and whether or not they're active or not. Now we're going to switch to the more uh, concrete part. So most of you are here because of growth marketing. You want to grow and lots of you are interested in ad advertising and, and how you can improve your ad campaigns. And tracking with Google Tag Manager has very straightforward advantages in, to improve your ad performance. So this is what we're going to talk about in the next video.